5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is best. Their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. Alexander Fleming, who is a New Zealand scientist, actually made a pretty interesting discovery in 1928. So down there you can see Alexander Fleming. What he did in 1928 is, this was completely accidental. He was growing bacteria as he would on an agar plant, so he's looking at bacteria. And the reason why he made the discovery was actually because he's being lazy. He cross-contaminated the actual agar plant. He, by mistake, put his finger on the agar plant. And if you remember, you have you know, a different type of, of bacteria or fungi or whatever else on your skin. So in that case, this fungus, which was called the fungus penicillium, was on his finger and he by mistake touched the actual agar plate. So that same penicillium went onto the actual agar plate. Then he left that plate for, a, again, he didn't really realize he touched it. He left the plate for a couple of days, came back, and he made a very interesting observation which was that here's a normal bacteria, it grew as it should, so we have a bacteria growing there, and where he touched the actual plate, on a pretty big circle around it, was nothing. The bacteria was gone. It seems to have been killed. And that's actually the discovery of penicillin, and penicillin is a form of antibiotics. So that was when he discovered antibiotics, and it was purely accidental. That was 1928. And it took some time for it to be actually commercially and medically available. And in the 1940s, so the early 1940s, it was put on the market. And it actually helped the Allies, so the Americans, to win the war. One of the reasons why they could win the war was because of penicillin. Because now you would have soldiers fighting on, on the battlefield. And what penicillin does is it kills bacteria. So people would have open wounds or a lot of other problems that would come from war. And usually they would die because they would have an infection. But in this case, they were given penicillin. This newly, this newly invented wonder drug, and that helped him to sort of get better and not die more or less. So that was the discovery of penicillin, which is now considered to be a very important antibiotic. That was done by Alexander Fleming in 1928. You don't need to remember Alexander Fleming or how it was discovered. But the reason why I mention this is because the dot itself says, identify the role of antibiotics in the management of infectious disease. So how is, infec how is infectious disease manage for the use of antibiotics. That's what we have to cover in this video. So first of all, what are antibiotics? Well, antibiotics are different types of chemicals. As we saw earlier, this chemical here, penicillin, was actually produced by the fungus. So what they, the fungus did was it would produce this antibiotic and would just shoot it around where it would live. So you have the fungus, this is the fungus, it would live here, it would produce the antibiotic and spread around it. And everything around it, all the bacteria around it would die. So that's our first use of our antibiotic. But now we have made synthetic ones. So most of the ones we use now are synthetic. And that means they don't come from an organism, but they are man-made. And what the antibiotics do, their main function, is they kill bacteria. So they kill bacteria, they're quite good at killing bacteria. Now what they don't do, and this is really important, they do not kill viruses. That They do not have any ability to kill viruses. If you're infected by a virus, do not take antibiotics. If you're infected by a bacterial infection, you can take antibiotics. So we've established antibiotics help us kill bacteria, especially the bad bacteria. And what's also really good is they don't harm our cells. So they don't harm human cells because they only target bacterial cells, which are certain prokaryotic cells, which have cell walls. They don't target human cells, which means even when we take antibiotics, we're only killing the bad stuff. We're not harming our cells. So that's good. But how do they actually work? Well, there's a couple of different ways they work. First of all, what they can do is they can prevent cell synthesis. Oh, sorry, cell wall. I should have written cell wall. So here you can see this is a cell. Of, this is meant to be a cell of a bacteria. And every bacteria has a cell wall, which is this right here. And these cell walls are absolutely crucial when it comes to them surviving. Now, what quite a few bacteria antibiotics do, including penicillin. So you can see here on that list, we've got penicillin. So penicillin is something that prevents the cell wall from being produced in bacteria. So let's say we have one bacteria and it wants to reproduce. So it's going to make two bacteria. Now, usually everything would be fine, but if you have these different types of antibiotics, that means when that happens, when they try to make two out of one, basically the cell wall itself won't be produced properly. 
So when they reproduce, the cell wall won't be produced, which means they can't divide anymore. Whenever they try to divide, it won't work, which means over time they will die because they can't divide. So that's how these different types of antibiotics work that help prevent the cell wall to being produced. That's number one. Another way they can work is they can directly destroy a cell membrane. If they destroy a cell membrane, they basically kill the bacteria. If they destroy it, if they prevent the cell wall from being produced, so if they prevent the cell wall from being produced, that doesn't kill it directly, it only kills them indirectly because it means they can't reproduce. But if they destroy a cell membrane, which is meant to be this here, and then the example of a antibiotics that kills the cell membrane is the polymycin tixin, polymycin, polymycins. So that antibiotic kills the cell membrane, and when that happens, it directly kills the bacteria. So this is one form of antibiotic that can directly kill the bacteria. And another, another group of antibiotics, which are quite famous, you can see here that all of these antibiotics prevent proteins from being produced. Remember, proteins are absolutely essential. They get produced by ribosomes in our cytoplasm, and so DNA gets translated and transcripted in our ribosomes, uh, transcripted in the actual nucleus and then translated at the ribosomes. And what these do, so the ones which prevent protein synthesis, as you can see here, they they act at translation. They prevent translation of DNA into proteins, which means the actual bacteria can't produce proteins. So if they can't pr produce proteins, that means they can't produce enzymes and all other kinds of stuff, which is really important, which means that also kills the bacteria. These were just three of the main ways that often antibiotics work. They can either help prevent the cell walls from being produced when we have one going into two. That could be one way. They can also destroy the cell membrane directly, which means the actual cell will die. And what they can also do is they can prevent proteins from being produced. That means they can't, this bacteria itself won't be able to produce enzymes and other kinds of proteins, which means the bacteria also will die as well from that. So these are three ways of antibiotics, how they can work. Now there's two ways or two ways to classify them. They're either broad spectrum or narrow spectrum antibiotics. What a broad spectrum means, as the word broad means, it means it's, that refers to it being quite general. So these you work on many different types, so many different types of bacteria. They're not, they're not specific, they're general. And we often use these if we don't know, if we don't know which bacteria is causing the problem. So if the bacteria is unknown, then we're going to use the broad spectrum because we can't use specific ones because we don't know the actual bacteria that is causing the disease. So in that case, we would use broad spectrums. But uh, penicillin, for example, is not broad. Penicillin is a narrow spectrum. So penicillin, which is the one we mentioned initially, is actually a narrow spectrum antibiotics. And what that means, it targets only one or two different types of bacteria. So it's specific in nature. Specific in nature targets only one or targets one or two different types but when it does it's quite effective at killing them so we use them if we know which bacteria is causing the disease then we're going to use those different narrow spectrum antibiotics if we don't know which bacteria is causing the disease we're going to use the broad spectrum antibiotics and all of the, the antibiotics will fall into one of those two categories so they're they're differentiated so they're different by the either being broad spectrum or narrow spectrum and also by how they work. Do they prevent the cell wall from being produced? Do they destroy the cell membrane? Or do they prevent protein being, protein synthesis being, proteins being made? But in all those cases, that would have the end effect of killing the bacteria eventually. Now what you should remember is antibiotics only kill bacteria. They do not harm viruses. And also that they don't harm the human cells. They will only target the bacterial cells. So yeah, for this top one, know how they work. Just quickly know the difference between broad spectrum and narrow spectrum and know that they only kill bacteria, they don't touch viruses. And that's what you need to know for the top point. But hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.